But wait a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. We have got a lot of basketball games to win. That Shazam just hitting a little different today. We continue to honor and remember the life of legendary Suns broadcaster Al McCoy. Uh, this was his last regular season game. Jerry Colangelo on hand, Matt Ishby. I thought that was really cool. Those two standing together. Devin Booker, the longest tenured member of the team, of course, was right next to Al to watch all of this courtside. It was just a beautiful ceremony. It was great to have an opportunity just to say thank you for all the people that have followed me for 51 years. Jerry Colangelo is the one that made it all possible. He started it by giving me the job, and uh, I just could never thank him enough. I know growing up, um, when I was a little kid, coming to the games and stuff, hearing him, um, it's nice to still be able to hear that voice, so it's, um, it's, it's really cool. I used to do radio with him. It was just this booming voice. I felt like, he, you know, I thought somebody was going to come into the office that was about 6'10". I soon found out, just based on how people revered him here, how important he's been to the fabric of the Suns and to this community. So it's pretty cool that he got recognized today, and I'm grateful that I had a chance to work with him. Lena, that's such a great point by Monty. Sounded 6'10", didn't he? And that is really a, <laughs> another thing that's echoed among pl basketball players yeah. and coaches is you expect this this huge figure, sure. and then you see Al McCoy. And then just going back to that Ring of Honor ceremony, being out there on the court, and I had my hand on a swivel, and I knew if there was going to be one player to leave the locker room yep. and come watch, it was going to be Devin Booker, one of the youngest players on the team, yeah. but one of the most dedicated to celebrating Al McCoy. Definitely. All right, someone who knew Al very well since the 70s, former D-backs longtime broadcaster Greg Schulte, the governor, right? Uh, Greg was, get this, Al's producer at one time in the 80s and 90s. He was the first person ever to fill in for, that, for Al when he got Larry Jitis. Uh, also, first year D-backs baseball, Al actually subbed in for Greg a few times. Greg Schulte joining us now. Greg, I remember when I talked to you about Al years ago, when we were asking when you were going to retire, you referred to him as your best friend. How close were you guys? Uh, really close, Cameron. And, uh, you know, it's a rough day. Uh, we, we knew the time was coming. Al uh, took uh, a turn for the worse here in the last week or so. And, uh, you know, it's never easy, even though you know it's coming. And uh, my best friend, I mean, uh, we've known each other since 1979. We'd be on the phone together a couple times a week. Uh, he'd call me after a big game. I'd call him after a big game. And, uh, you know, it's a, a friendship that uh, I'm going to miss, uh, you know, because I won't be able to talk to him anymore. Greg, how did this all start? How did you guys become best friends? Well, hey, I was out here. He'd uh, actually been uh, brought to uh, Phoenix to call Phoenix Giants games back in the 50s and moved on to the Roadrunners and the Suns. My wife and I moved out in 1979. Uh, I was from the Illinois part of the Quad Cities, which also included two cities in Iowa. Al was an Iowa guy, and we just kind of hit it off. Al was still working at KTAR. The Suns were on KTAR. That's where I went to work, and uh, it, it was a friendship that developed at that time, and uh, lasted here until uh, 2024. And that friendship will go on, but, uh, you know, it'll just be a little bit more quiet. Greg, what made him so special in your eyes? Uh, very humble. I mean, Al was not one of those that would brag about anything. Uh, you know, he called the ball game. He always told me uh, when I was broadcasting, one of the first things he told me when I got the Diamondbacks job, remember, baseball is the story. You're not the story. I'm not the story with the Suns. It's the game itself and the players. And I always uh, remembered that and uh, always will remember that in any kind of sport I might broadcast, you know, as a fill-in. Uh, again, I thought it was wise words from Al and, uh, uh, you know, something that uh, I took to the heart. And that was just Al. He was just a humble person, a good person. And I'll say this. I don't think there has been a better broadcaster uh in Arizona, in the history of this state, uh, news people, this is not a snub at anybody else, but I don't think there was a better broadcaster, somebody who meant more to the people, the, the listening audience, the viewing audience than Al McCoy. When you guys were talking about broadcasting and about life and about sports and baseball and basketball, like what were those what were those conversations like away from the mic, Greg? 
Uh, they were good. I mean, I asked Al for a lot of advice. Al would ask me, you know, if you ever hear anything, uh, if you, you know, that I need to do, uh, let me know. If, I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever had to. Uh, but we critique critique each other, and uh, they were all good critiques for the most part. Uh, he he call he'd call me after a big game and say, "Hey, how about those Diamondbacks?" I'd call him. Uh, you know, especially the last couple of years here, the way things have gone with the Suns pretty well. And, uh, you know, hey, Al, they're going to get in, you know, and they did. And uh, it, it was it was a lot of fun. It was just, Every conversation was good. But we'd always talk uh, sports. Uh, we'd talk about the Midwest. Uh, a lot of broadcasters are from that area. Um, it, just a lot of things, a lot of memories to talk with. I saw Al probably about a three weeks ago or so. And it's one of the things we talked about all the, all the great memories we had. Cause you know, I would travel with him with the sons and uh, he played the piano when we go into certain uh, places uh, they, they'd have a piano. Pal, Al was a, an accomplished pianist and he he'd play the piano and he'd get a big ovation for that. But uh, it's, it's sad. Uh, I'm keeping it cool here right now, but, uh, you know, I'm sure I'm going to have my moment sooner or later. So, Greg, even towards the end, I was still talking sports. Like, that was the one thing. You always asked him how he was doing. He'd, he'd brush yeah. it off quickly and, and yeah. bring up something else because he just he wanted to keep that conversation going. He loved talking about anything and everything sports. Yeah, and everything Arizona, you know, be it uh, the Suns, Diamondbacks, Cardinals, uh, you know, hockey, uh, ASU. And he, uh, for the most part, had a part in each one of those sports. So uh, a, a great man. He lived a great life, 91 years. I, I guess if you could sum up Al's life, I, I would use a term that he used very often called the Sun game, Suns game. It was a wham, bam, slam. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Greg, you're going to get us all with that one right there, man. Um, do you remember the last thing you said now? I love you, Al, as we walked out the door at uh, his apartment. Al was one of a kind. They broke the mold when they uh, when, when he was born. Uh, Al McCoy, uh, the greatest that uh, has broadcast here in Arizona, and uh, nobody will ever top what he did. Uh, 51 years of broadcasting for one team. You know, I did 26. I thought that was a lot. But 51, 91 years old, he had a great life. The one thing I told Al, and he agreed with, I said, Al, you know, you – you're very fortunate. You were re never really sick a day in your life up here until the end. So he lived a full life. He lived it well. And uh, yeah, he he went out a champ. There's no doubt about it. Do you have a favorite Al McCoy call or moment that just makes you smile? Uh, yeah, I think maybe a Rex Chapman shot, uh, a big three that he hit. Yeah, exactly. And I was screaming in the background. I feel, I feel bad about that. But it was just... You know, we had a lot of moments like that. Al had a, ha uh, a habit, too, when something big would happen. He would, I, we sat right next to each other. He would grab my arm and he'd hold on as tight as he could. I think because he didn't want to get out of his chair or he just wanted to keep things under control. So, uh, yeah, but that Rex Chapman shot, there were a lot of good moments for the Suns. There's no doubt about it. And he called every one of them. So, but uh, the Rex Chapman shot's the one I remember. And then, of course, Greg, we're in your office. You're in your office right now. And is Al always right over your shoulder right there? Al's right over my shoulder, yeah. I've got uh, the bobblehead up there, and uh, I'll probably play it several times. I don't know if every time I come into the office, but maybe. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate the time, buddy. Thank you.